Chesterfield, Chesterfield always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell, then you smoke them. Chesterfield presents the Bob Hope Show. Transcribed direct from Carswell Air Force Base, Fort Worth, Texas. With Les Brown and his band of renown for Chesterfield, yours truly, Hi Aberback, Jimmy Wakeley and Jerry Colonna, Marilyn Maxwell. And here he is, the man who's at home in the oil country because he's a natural gusher, Bob Hope! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, here I am in Texas. Yes, sir. Good old Texas. That's claustrophobia spelled backwards. <laughs> but I really like this state. Of all the 48 states, Texas is my favorite three. <laughs> and I got a nice reception when I arrived today. A bunch of bombardiers came up and said, Welcome to Carswell, Mr. Hope. We're always glad to meet a fellow egg dropper. And when I got off the plane, Major Finley Ross stepped up and slapped me in the back. He can't reach very high, can he? <laughs> but I appreciated the thought anyway. I want to tell you, these, these Texans are really patriotic. They shot one guy when he didn't stand up for the national anthem. Poor guy, didn't know the words so deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> And I love that Texas drawl. A big Texas guy tried to steal my date last night, and I said, that's my gal, show enough, and I want you to show enough, leave her alone, show enough. Then he showed me his muscles, and I showed him my muscle, and I guess I didn't show enough. <laughs> but what a place, this Carswell. Now, I, I was amazed at the youth of some of the boys here. They're so young. One of them broke his jaw the other day. He saluted while he was still sucking his thumb. <laughs> They're so young, I saw one fellow wearing a three-cornered parachute. <laughs> I went for a plane ride today, but it's the first one I ever took while tied to the propellers. <laughs> and was one fellow insulting. When I asked him how you open a parachute, he said, very simple, just count ten, jerk. I went up in one of those B-36s. They really fly high, but I insisted I wasn't scared. Then they pointed out that my side of the plane was giving off yellow vapor clouds. <laughs> Gosh, was I nervous. I said to the pilot, do you mind if I bite my nails? He said, no, go right ahead. Anything to make you stop biting mine. <laughs> But I enjoyed the ride, and what a cheer went up when I stepped out of the plane. I wonder if they'd have cheered so hard if I'd waited till the plane landed. <laughs> now let's sell Chesterfields. Every week, the whole bunch of us, Bing and Godfrey and Como and I, we ask you to smoke Chesterfields. And we give you these good reasons. Chesterfields are milder and they leave no unpleasant aftertaste. Here's how to prove that. First, make our mildness test. Buy a pack of Chesterfields. Open them. Enjoy that mild, mellow aroma. Compare it and you'll find Chesterfields are milder. Right. And as tobacco growers have been saying for years, tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. So light up a Chesterfield and you'll see how true that is. Chesterfields do smoke milder. And with that milder smoke, you get no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So you know why we say smoke Chesterfield. It's the mild one. It's the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Always buy Chesterfields. You'll agree it's the best cigarette you ever smoked. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce a swell gal who traveled with our troop recently through the Orient. 
and the Aleutians and did a great job to help entertain over there. Here she is, Marilyn Maxwell. fellas, and thank you, Bob. Say, how about this audience, Marilyn? Aren't they great? Oh, they sure are. I never saw so many handsome young men. Yeah. Bob. Bob. Bob, tell me something. How is it that you never joined the Air Force? Well, I thought about it, Marilyn, but I blacked out. In the air? No, when I thought about it. But you may see me in an Air Force uniform pretty soon, Marilyn. Paramount's going to make a flying picture, and I'm up for the lead. Is it a dramatic part? Oh, it's very dramatic. It's a story of a mean guy who hates everybody in his outfit, and he spends a month on a desert island with Jane Russell, and he changes. He changes? Yeah, he finds out how much he misses his buddies. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a fantasy. Have you been signed for the picture? Not yet, Marilyn. That's one of the reasons I'm here at Carswell. I want to find out everything I can about the Air Force, and then I'll be all set. If the studio will let me play a serious role. Say, here's someone who can help you, Bob. One of the enlisted men here at Carswell Air Base, Sergeant Everson of the 492 Bomb Squadron. Yes, sir. Right Hey, that's swell, Marilyn. Step right in here, Sergeant. Thank you, Mr. Hope. Oh, you can call me Bob. You outrank me, you know. <laughs> what do you do here, Sergeant? Are you one of the B-36 boys? That's right, sir. I'm a tail gunner. Well, Sergeant, I wanted to talk to you because I have a peculiar problem, and I think you can help me out. I'm a gunner, not a plastic surgeon. <laughs> Please, I'll do the jokes. You just take care of your... <laughs> you just take care of your slide rule and compass, will you? My problem, Sergeant, is to get some Air Force background for a picture I'm making. What do you do in the picture, Bob? Well, I'm a colonel who falls into disgrace and loses his commission, then goes to China and fights with the Flying Tigers and regains his commission. Then I get into a brawl in Shanghai with the Admiral of the British Fleet, so I hop to Morocco and put down a rebellion in the Foreign Legion. Some spies put me on a coffee boat bound for Brazil, and I swim ashore and get rescued by a tribe of Zulus just in time to talk them out of slaughtering the settlers in the Belgian Congo. <laughs> now, after that, the action begins. Sounds like an interesting picture, Bob. Yeah, I'll tell you more about it, but I don't want to ruin the plot for you. <laughs> well, Sergeant, what I really want to know is how you guys act when you're in the air. Suppose you're in a big thunderstorm with a lot of lightning and the wind tossing the plane around. Do you smoke, pace up and down, or what? Oh, I play cards, look at magazine, or manicure my fingernails. That's all? Sometimes I just fall asleep. Yeah, but how'd you act before your nerves went to pieces? <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind answering these questions, do you, Sergeant? My producer at Paramount are going to phone me after the show, so naturally I want to find out everything I can. Well, I have to leave to go back on duty, Bob. What else did you want to know? Well, there's a couple of love scenes in the picture. Suppose Marilyn Maxwell were your <coughs> girlfriend. Can you tell me how you'd kiss her? I can show you better, Bob. <laughs> and I thought that gleam in his eye was stage fright. <laughs> Marilyn, the sergeant wants to show me some Air Force procedure. Okay with you? Well, I'd be delighted, sergeant. Well, first, Bob, we take him in our arms like this. Then we hold him close like this, and then... There, she's officially in the Air Force. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Come on, Miss Maxwell. Get off. Thank you, Sergeant, and I hope you find your way back to your landing field. <laughs> Gee, he's quite a man, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I could kiss like that, too, if I smeared my lips with tequila. <laughs> anyway, Marilyn, I found out... Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, that must be Paramount calling. 
Hello? Yeah, put him on. Hello, Mr. Freeman. What, you've been listening and you're going to start the flying picture right away? Oh, that's well, Mr. Freeman. When do I report to work? Oh, oh, I see. Well, goodbye. Well, when do you report to work, Bob? I don't. They're giving the part to Sergeant Everson. Is that your personality, or do you have a cold button somewhere? <laughs> Is there something I can do for you? Well, you don't know me, Mr. Hope, but I'm Bubbles Gilligan, president of the Bob Hope Fan Club of Fort Worth. Gee, well, that's swell. Oh, we're just double ginger, double peachy, super duper crazy about you, Mr. Hope. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go too far, I... Oh, we mean it. Us girls took a vote, and we all agreed that we'd even be willing to eat every bit of our spinach if we could find you down at the bottom of the dish. <laughs> well, it's a nice thought, but a little messy. Anyway, here's I... a present. Um, I want to thank you on behalf of the other girls and myself. We all took turns knitting on it. We put the initial C in the middle because you're always Chesterfield. Here. Oh, this is wonderful. Just what I needed. A knitted ashtray. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Hope. And we'd like you to know that we've decided you are the most handsome, clever, and charming... Uh... Uh... Man? We can't decide about that. <laughs> The girls in my club think you're just amazing. Now, if this is all you... Oh, we also made up a poem about you, Mr. Hope. A poem? Uh-huh. And I was appointed to come over here and read it to you. Well, go right ahead. <clears throat> From the girls' fan club of Fort Worth to the peachiest fella here on earth. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> we Texas girls would like to say we are glad you traveled down our way. In the cattle country, we think you're keen. You're the biggest longhorn we've ever seen. And now, friends, let me present the only nose in captivity that can test the mildness of a whole case of Chesterfields in one fell sniff. I choose to interpret that as a compliment, High. And now, if that's the last of Crosby's old gags you're going to steal tonight, let's get on with the sales pitch. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. It sure is. And you can prove it real easy. Just make the Chesterfield mildness test and you'll see. Get yourself a pack of Chesterfields. Open it and enjoy that mild, mellow aroma. Compare it with your old brand, and you'll see Chesterfields are milder. Now, as any tobacco farmer will tell you, tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. Smoke Chesterfields, and you'll see what I mean. Another thing, that milder smoking Chesterfield will leave no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact was confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. Yep, there's an old saying in the Southwest, if you can't whip a man, join him. And you can apply that to Chesterfields. <laughs> For some strange reason, they call me Tex. From all signs, I should have grown up to be a typical son of Texas, but somehow I wasn't like all the other cowboys. I couldn't ride, I couldn't rope. Shucks, I didn't even know what year Eamon Carter discovered America. <laughs> I guess the situation was getting a mighty serious, because one day my daddy sent for me. He looked at me with those loving eyes that seemed to tell me he understood my problem and would always help me and be gentle. And then he said, Sit down, you manger polecat! <laughs> did you send for me, Daddy? Yes, I did, son. Tell me, 
How long you been my son now? Ever since the day I was born, 25 years ago. <laughs> you know something, son? Your mother played a dirty trick on both of us. <laughs> Son, son, I don't mind telling you I'm mighty disappointed in the way you turned out. But I'm trying to be a good Texan. I'm trying awfully hard to be a cowboy. Well, how can you say that? Why, you don't even smell like a cowboy. How many times did you bathe this year? With water? Yes. Twice. Just as I thought. A dude. <laughs> Son, you just ain't going about it right. How long since you been on a horse? Wait a minute. Been on a horse? Ain't the horse supposed to get on you? <laughs> no. Either you get on the ball and become a riding, roping, shooting, drinking, two-fisted Texan, or I'll give you the worst punishment a cowboy can get. What's that? I'll take away your hop-along Cassidy suit. <laughs> You know, that little talk with my daddy made me mighty sad. Yes, sir, my heart was heavier than Glenn McCarthy's money belt. <laughs> I needed a bit of encouragement, so I moseyed over to my girl's house. My girl, Mary Jane. She's a pretty little thing, luscious red lips, blue eyes. And she wore her yellow hair in a bun on the top of her head. I didn't mind that, but there was a hot dog in it. <laughs> I've been kind of shy and backward. Matter of fact, last night was the first time I got up enough nerve to kiss her. Yes, sir, I finally took the bull by the horns. Tomorrow night I'm gonna ki- Tomorrow night I'm gonna kiss Mary Jane instead of the bull. <laughs> she was waiting for me when I got to her house. Howdy, Tex. Howdy, honey. Tell me, Mary Jane, what have you been doing today? Well, I got up at four this morning, milked three herd of cattle, plowed the North Forty, repaired two miles of fence, painted the barn, shingled the roof, dug a well, and chopped six months' supply of firewood. And then I had some lunch. <laughs> That's a woman for you, always thinking about food. <laughs> well, what did you do today? Well, you know I ain't very handy around the ranch. I tried to milk a cow. What do you mean, tried? Well, well I was milking for half an hour, and then I discovered I was shaking hands with myself. <laughs> Why didn't you stop? I did after I got two quarts. <laughs> oh, Tex, why can't you be a real cowboy like Tumbleweed Wakely? Wakely? Is he still hanging around you? Didn't you tell me you might marry me? Well, it would be kind of nice. I got a hankering to get hitched. Maybe someday there'd be a little you and a little me. Just what I've always wanted, midgets. <laughs> Well, what do you say, Mary Jane? Well, I'm sorry, Tex. Next to Tumbleweed Wakely, you're nothing but a tenderfoot. A tenderfoot? Yeah. Why don't you practice being a cowboy? Get on your horse and ride for a couple of days. No, thanks. I'd rather have just my feet tender. Now, look, Mary Jane. <laughs> Howdy, Mary Jane. Tumbleweed. Come here, my little doggie, and hitch your chuck wagon to my heart and let me corral you in my arms, and let's palaver some love by the light of the purple sage. How about this guy? Brushes his teeth with saddle soap. <laughs> Closest he's ever been to a horse is when he made a picture with Sidney Greenstreet. <laughs> well, look who's here. Tex Hope, the poop head of the Pecos. One more crack out of you, and I'll use your head to play a Roy A. Cuff record. Now, listen, hush up, Tex. Tumbleweed brought his guitar along to serenade me, and Is you... he got that old geek with him again? Yes. <laughs> and you know, you're just messing everything up. Go ahead, Tumbleweed. All right. I want to drink my coffee from an old tin can while the moon goes shining high. I want to hear the call of the whippoorwill. I want to hear the coyotes cry. I want to feel the saddle of my old cow horse 
Riding him out on the range Just to kick him in the side Watch him show his step and pride Out on the Texas plains Oh, Tumbleweed, that was mighty pretty Sounded like Gabby Hayes with his beard on fire <laughs> Hey, Jay, and this is your idea of a Texan, huh? Why, well, I'm more Texas than he'll ever be. Don't get tough with me, son, or I'll wrap my guitar right around your neck. You do, and I'll... You'll what? I'll twang all over you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that settles the Texan. Get out of here. And don't come back until you're as much a Texan as Tumbleweed. And furthermore, I'll never hitch up with you unless you learn to sing pretty like he does. All right, I'm going to get me some singing lessons right now, and then I'm coming back for you. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. <laughs> well, this here looks like the singing teacher's office. I'll go right in. Oh, let me fish out the teacher. Hey, what are you doing singing into that envelope? Sending out a singing lesson by mail. Not for <laughs> 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 Corona! <laughs> yes, indeed, I'm Professor Colonna, voice coach, singing instructor, student of the fine arts, and had a call salesman. <laughs> well, I want to take some of them there singing lessons so I can be a real Texan and win my girl's hand. All righty. Now, first... <laughs> What part of Texas is that? All righty. Okay, let's move. They're coming towards us. Let's go. All right. First, first I want to tell you that I'm not one of these phony singing teachers who will bleed you for money. I'll only charge you 50 cents an hour. Well, that's reasonable. Yes, and I think I could teach you to sing in only 2,750 hours. Now, wait a minute. That's over $1,000. Will it cost that much to teach me to sing? No, it'll cost me that much to get to Florida where my piano player's wife is waiting for me. <laughs> what about your wife? She's in Mexico with my piano player. <laughs> Colonna, you're a complete idiot. I know. Why be half safe? <laughs> I got a sneaky feeling you don't know anything about music at all. I don't. I'll have you know I can play every musical instrument there is, and all at the same time. Well, how is that possible? Big Mouth 17 Union Cards. <laughs> well, what about giving me a lesson? All righty. Now, first, I must... <laughs> now, open your mouth and stick out your tongue. All right. Father. Father. Father, a little father. I can't. You're stepping on it. <laughs> oh, come now. Just a little bit farther. Father. What do you know? Slipped off the roller. <laughs> young man, young man, I tell you what to do. Take this singing instruction book with you and study it. After you're finished, you'll be a fine singer. Oh, thank you, Professor. I've got to go now. I'm working with another student in the next room, and I've got to sing a song. Excuse me. <laughs> Happens every time I sing Orange Colored Sky. <laughs> so long, Professor. So long. I sure hope Mary Jane is home. I read this here singing book from front to back, and she's got to marry me now. Who is it? It's Tex, honey. And I'm a real Texan now. I learned me how to sing. Well, it's too late now, Tex. I found me somebody that can sing better than you and Wakely put together. Who is it? I was walking along my... Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> Hey, 
Detective Marilyn. What is it, Bob? Well, you know, the show's going to be over in a little while. I've been wondering if you, you and I could get together. We sort of take a little walk, huh? Why, of course, Bob. Oh, you're such a delightful child. You're just the type I'd like for my sister. And you're just the type I'd like for my mother. <laughs> Look, Max, I'm trying to tell you I'm not as old as you think I am. In fact, I'm practically just a kid. They won't let me buy a copy of Esquire unless I bring a note from my mother. Oh, now, really, Bob, don't you think it's time you started acting your age? Acting my age? I'm not calling Grandma Moses for a date yet. And just remember, none of us are safe from old father time. Well, what do you mean? Listen to me. Someday... Your figure will start to spread. Your fall and arches will drop like lead. You'll find your beautiful smile has fled. No hair atop of your shiny head. Don't let the wrinkles upset you. I'll still be happy I met you. Darn it, baby, that's love. Someday you're gonna lose your physique I'll see the doctor in twice a week My chic will suddenly go antique You'll be so deaf that I'll have to shriek Though you're a physical wreck, dear I'll still be happy to neck, dear Darn it, baby, that's love That's love, that's love we might as well be sensible. That's love, that's love. To me, you're indispensable. Despite the fact that someday you're gonna look really beat. Oatmeal is all that they'll let you eat. Boy Scouts will help you across the street. Too old to even be in. Though you'll be too weak to court me, I'm still gonna let you support me. You will always be my turtle dove. Me for you, and you for me, collecting social security. Darn, Darn it, baby, that. Wait, hmm? I have an idea. What? Listen to me, child. Just imagine I'm a kid of 17. Someone's been spiking your oval team. Darn, Darn it, baby, that's love. <laughs> For the memory of the Air Force personnel at this air base called Carswell, to every guy who rides the sky in a 36 so well, we thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, our thanks to the men at Carswell Air Base, and believe me, we can thank all men like these that Korea didn't bring us something worse than a national emergency. I mean a national catastrophe. Yes, sir, while our G.I. in the ground was making the heroic withdrawal from the port of Hungnam, our G.I. in the sky, like the little Dutch boy who held his hand on the dike, teamed up with Navy's big guns and held back the red tide. Operations Hungnam wrote a great page in the book of American history and gave us our greatest New Year's resolution to preserve that old American custom, liberty. Liberty's a wonderful thing. It pays two for one. You get out of it twice what you put into it. And, mister, if we put in half as much as these men of the United States Air Force, all the communists in the Kremlin couldn't even put a dent in our New Year's resolution. Thank you and good night. Be sure to listen to next week's Bob Hope Show with our special guest, Jane Russell, direct from Camp Pendleton. Chesterfield has brought you the Bob Hope Show from Carswell Air Base.